Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and I'm back with another video for you today. I am super excited as always to bring you this content. These three decor pieces are super easy to do and really affordable. Everything just about comes from Dollar Tree and anybody can do these. They're really simple. So you know what, let's just jump right into it. I'm going to be using these beads from Dollar Tree. I bought these really because I love those little buffalo check beads that are on there. So I got a couple of those. And then I have these wood stickers from Dollar Tree. I will be using some cardboard. I have some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. This oval wood plaque from Dollar Tree. I will be using the Hello Hobby black chalk paint from Walmart. And my white Sharpie from Dollar Tree. Some jute twine and some gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree. I have the orange and the black. So I started out by cutting my um, cardboard into triangles. We're making a witch's hat if you haven't figured that out. And I'm going to glue them together. I'm going to glue together four of them. That's going to give me the width that I need to then go and put my um, gingham black ribbon down the sides to cover up the corrugation of the cardboard. I have painted everything black. I have glued my tumbling tower blocks together end to end and painted them black as well. So now you see me putting on my little ribbon. I love this. I love to do this little technique that I, you know, came up with just because I need to cover that corrugation. I don't want to try to put a lot of paint in there, just paint it and paint it and paint it because it's just going to seep down inside the holes. It's going to be a mess. The best way to cover it and to give your project more dimension and more texture is to put some ribbon on it quick and easy and it's not messy. So I love that. So now I'm going to take my white uh, Sharpie or paint pen. Actually, this one is not from Dollar Tree. The one from Dollar Tree wouldn't work on this black paint, and I don't know why. It kept coming up gray, and it kept skipping. This is a Sharpie, actually a paint pen from Joann's. That's where this is from. So I'm just going in and doing a little bit of hand lettering. I'm writing, the witch is in. And every so often I have to tap down on that paint marker to get it to um, start releasing more paint. I'm really going to, I need to invest in some Arteza. Everybody says that those are amazing and I really need to get some of those. So now that I have that done, I am going to take my cone shape or the top of the witch's hat and I'm just going to hot glue it onto the wood round. And then I'm going to take some hot glue and some wood glue and I'm going to glue the tumbling tower blocks to the back of the hat just to make sure that my cone shape or my triangle stays in place. I needed to make it a little more sturdy. I didn't want it to fall over or come apart. And now that that's done, I am going to take one of the orange pumpkins out of this pack and again, these are wood pumpkins or wood stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take that glue dot off the back and I'm going to use some hot glue just to make sure everything stays in place. And now I'm going to take my orange gingham ribbon and I'm just going to go around the bottom of the witch's hat where the sash would be. I'm going to do that in the orange and in the black and white gingham. And I'm also going to add some jute twine around the bottom. I'm going to layer all of those pieces together, making sure you can see each piece, each ribbon and the gingham. In order to make sure that I could see the orange, because the orange and the black is the same width, I just cut the black in half lengthwise to make it skinnier so that I could see the orange behind it. Now I'm just going to wrap some jute twine around a couple times. Not too many because I don't want to cover up my black gingham. I'm going to tie a knot on the side. And I'm just going to string my beads onto that. And this one is done and ready to be displayed. You guys have to let me know what you think about this decor. What you think about my little witch's hat. You could do this way bigger. If you wanted to make a centerpiece, I could see you doing this way bigger and putting a lot more embellishments on it. Maybe some spiders, some more pumpkins, um, some 
deco mesh, some flowers, whatever you wanted to put on it. I could see this being a centerpiece and being really big just from cardboard. I mean, the bottom piece that is that oval plaque, if you don't have something big enough to make the bottom of that, cardboard would do it. I might do that, you guys. So I'm just stringing my beads onto my jute. Tying it off so they stay in place. And we're just about done. There she is. So here is DIY number one. You guys, as always, I need you to comment down below. Let me know what you think of this one. I think it's cute. And I hope you like it as much as I do. Moving on to DIY number two, I have one of the Dollar Tree birch pieces. We're still using my beads that I used in my last um, decor piece. And then I have this paper kind of stencil that I had in my stash. I think I got it from Hobby Lobby. I have, no, I didn't. I got it from Target. Um, I have one of the long Dollar Tree signs with the pumpkin on it. We're just going to be cutting that pumpkin off. And I will be using my Waverly chalk paint from Walmart in the color pumpkin. So this one is really easy as well. We are going to make a half pumpkin, like, I don't know, shelf setter, I guess you could call it. But it's just going to be a half pumpkin. This is really cute. I love how it turned out. This is not an original ideal from me. I actually found this inspiration piece on, oh, uh, where was I? Etsy. Etsy, Amazon. I'm thinking Etsy. Either Etsy or Pinterest, one or the other. You guys, I find inspiration from everywhere. Like I said, some of it just pops into my head and it's an original piece. Some of it is a dupe from Kirkland's, West Elm, you know, places like that, Pottery Barn. Some of it is inspiration from other crafters, just wherever I find it. And then I take it and make it my own or it actually is my own. So I think this is a Pinterest or Etsy. But anyway, so I did some hand um, drawing and I just made the shape of the top of a pumpkin. And then I cut that out using my wire cutters, my X-Acto knife, and then I sanded everything down, made it smooth. I took my little paper stencil and I don't want to use paint on this because I want to keep it. So if you dab paint on it, it's just paper. It's going to get totally messy. It's like a one-time use deal. But if you trace everything out with a pencil, you can use this stencil over and over again. So I just put my stencil on where I wanted it. And I just traced it out with paper, with a with paper, with a pencil. And um, I'm doing a really, really light dry brush of the pumpkin Waverly paint onto this pumpkin. I took my little birch log, as you guys can see, and I cut it in half. Whenever I'm doing something flat like this, and I want that rustic look of a real piece of wood but I need it to lay flat. I just cut it in half and stack it. Hot glue it, wood glue it, and then um, apply it to whatever it is that I'm making. So I hot glued it, wood glued it together end to end, and then I hot glued it and wood glued it to the top of this pumpkin. And now that I've done my rough dry brush in that orange paint, I am now going in with a brown marker and I'm just filling in my lettering. Again, these came from Target. I'm pretty sure that my stencils came from Target. I have quite a few of them. And you may see some more before the season is over. So now I'm just filling everything in. I love how this came out. It's really simple and so cute and very inexpensive. I really like it. 
Now, because I thought that it looked a little flat, like it needed something else, you know I had to go in and dry brush it. So I'm using my white matte chalk paint from Apple Barrel, and I'm just going to give it a light brushing with that white paint. Now I like it better. Now I'm going to take some ribbon and ribbon of choice, whatever you have available, whatever you want to use. My ribbon came from Joann's and I'm just going to cut it down, make it a little thinner because I don't have a lot of space between my wording and my stem and I don't want to cover up the wording. So I can't leave it as wide as it was. So I'm just going to thin it down a little bit. I'm going to make my loops. I'm going to stack them together. I'm going to pinch them, tie them off with some jute cord like I love to do. And I'm just going to hot glue it to that stem. I'm going to add some blocks on the back. Oh, no, not on this one. I'm going to end up using those beads. And I'm going to put a hanger on it, a beaded hanger, so that we can hang it up on a door. You guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for joining me today for this video. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel, welcome to these Cute and Crafty family. I'm so blessed and happy to have you here. And if you're a ride or die, you've been with me since the beginning of my journey. I love you. You guys are fabulous and I am blessed to have you here. Thank you so much. And to those of you that are watching, haven't yet decided if you want to be part of the family, Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you never miss out on another cute and crafty DIY with D. Now that I've got my bow on, adding some more glue, making sure everything stays in place, I am going to Go ahead and just string my beads, hot glue my jute cord with the beads on it to the back of my pumpkin. I like adding some masking tape as well to make sure everything stays in place. And this little beauty is ready to be displayed. Now I don't have it hanging up because I don't have a hook where I film at, where I show my um, in, in products or my you know, DIYs, I don't have a hook there. I just have like a thumbtack that I use because of the beads. I can't hang it up, but it is meant to be hung up. You can see the little bead hanger and it's just so simple and so pretty. I love it. Is it my favorite of the three? Yes, hands down. This is my favorite of the three that I'm bringing today. Moving on to DIY number three and the last one of this video. We are still using those beads. I will be using my Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream, some Mod Podge, a tassel left over from another DIY, and these two napkins, I thought they went really well together, doing some hand lettering. And of course, you need one of those Dollar Tree signs. Well, you don't actually need one. I chose to use a Dollar Tree sign to get the shape of the pumpkin that I wanted. But you guys know that Dollar Tree has wood pumpkins. You could just grab one of those but I chose to make my own because I wanted a particular shape. And of course, I'm gonna cover the back of it with brown craft paper. So here you see, I've already got my pumpkin painted in the chiffon rust -Oleum cream, and then I am sanding it down because it has to look weathered and old and distressed. I painted the top with some apple barrel nutmeg. I didn't show you that, but I did. I painted that little stem. And now I'm just giving myself some lines because I need to um, be able to write my wording and I'm trying to make sure that I get it straight. So just giving myself some lines so I know where to start. And I am gonna write fall is my favorite color. I like doing this in pencil, as you guys well know, if you've been with me for a while, I do everything in pencil so that I can erase it if I don't like how it looks and I could start over. So I don't really just go in with my marker. 
I start out with the pencil first and then I go back over it with a marker or I go back over it and I hand paint it. Now that I have that all done, I'm going to go in with that same brown Sharpie or marker and I'm just going to fill in all the words. You guys, thank you so much for responding in my last video. I asked you what kind of festivals you guys had that you went to because here in Ohio we have a couple. I mentioned we have Apple Festival, Strawberry Festival, Corn Festival, um, and then Oktoberfest. And you guys responded. And you, some of you guys have like a Cherry Festival, which I thought was like really, I wish we had one because I'm like a Cherry Festival. I love cherries. And um what other festival was there? Oh my goodness, a melon festival. And then you guys have Oktoberfest like we do. So yeah, it was interesting to hear some of the festivals that you guys have. I think we're done because Oktoberfest is in September. Like I said, it's not in October. So I think we're done. I don't think we have any more festivals, at least not where I live. Now we're getting into spooky season, so the haunted houses and things like that have started. Um, I like to do the Halloween trail. I don't really do the haunted house, and it's where they have all this, these pumpkins. They do a pumpkin lighting, which is really nice. So I like to do that. So now that I've got my words, back to the video. <laughs> so now that I've got my words all done and filled in, I did a little bit of fussy cuts with my napkins. I took my little scissors and I really went into detail on these because I need them to fit on here. And if I just kind of just rip it and I, well, ripping it is the best way to do it because you don't see the edges as well, but I really need it to cut it, to get it down to size to fit. So now that that's done, I am going in with my Mod Podge and I'm going to start to apply my pieces of napkin. You can see I cut out the little tiny pumpkins that was on the napkin that had um, the green on it, had those little pumpkins and all of the wording, blessed and thankful. And I don't remember where I got that from, probably Hobby Lobby. I attached those to the bottom and now I am just putting my Mod Podge on the top of the pumpkin to do that big cutout of pumpkins. I also went in with that same marker that I used for the wording and I just gave my stem of my pumpkin some lines. I need it to stand out a little bit more. I wanted it to have more definition. So that's why I did it. So now I'm applying my tissue paper at the top. Again, you guys, I do the best I can with Mod Podge. You guys have given me so many wonderful um, tips on how to make it smooth and how to use the plastic and how to use heat. and. I do all those things, but it's still wrinkly. So I just go ahead and put it on the best I can. <laughs> now that I've got it on and it is dried, I am going in with my Gator hand sander from Walmart and I'm going to clean up my edges. And don't worry, I did not forget to put my craft paper on the back of this pumpkin. This is really cute. I love it. It looks like it was painted on. So now I'm going to use that little tassel that I had left over from another DIY. And I'm trying to figure out how do I want to put it on? Do I want to put it around the top of that stem? Or do I want to put it, just hot glue it to the side? I ended up just hot gluing it to the side because, again, I did not want to cover up my wording. And if I just put it over the stem. It hung too low. Yes, I could have cut it, but I like the, I don't know, the something extra that it gave it, the interest that it gave it by just hot gluing it to the side. 
You guys, if you are enjoying this content, please give it a big fat thumbs up. That truly helps my channel to grow. It helps YouTube keep me in the algorithm so everyone else can see my channel and decide if they would like to be a part of the cute and crafty family. And I am so blessed and I appreciate you guys for that. So please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you've made it to this far in the video, leave me a pumpkin. How cute is she? All I did was add some tumbling tower blocks to the bottom so that this is a standalone piece and she is gorgeous and ready to be displayed. I am going to go back in if you look at the very bottom because it's going to drive me nuts where you can see a little bit of the tower block sticking out. It's right at the orange part of the pumpkin. I'm going to go in with my orange marker and just fix that because I can't. It's going to make me crazy. But other than that, she is gorgeous. Here's the final reveal of everything I've made for you guys today. Very affordable, very easy, and it all turned out really cute. I hope you guys have been keeping busy and crafting for fall and just enjoying the change of the season. The leaves are absolutely beautiful. Fall is one of my favorite seasons. I love when everything is changing and so vibrant and so pretty. Thank you so much again for being here with me today. As always, you guys, I need you to be blessed. I need you to stay safe. Craft something beautiful today. Bye.